Hi Dancers, Jess here. Welcome back to the Whole Dancer YouTube channel. I'm so thrilled you're tuning in. If this is your first time, welcome. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have created for dancers on dancer health, wellness, and balance. So today's topic came from an Instagram question. That's one of the many ways you can reach out to me if you've got something you'd like me to cover on YouTube or the blog or beyond. And this was, what should a dancer weigh? You know, this question likely comes from some of those ideas of body mass index or height weight charts and what's an appropriate weight for height. And then, of course, dancers have that added pressure of aesthetic preferences in the world of dance that sometimes create, you know, challenging mindsets for all of us. And it creates a challenge to stay in a positive headspace when you're trying to pursue dance and stay balanced. So I totally understand where this question is coming from. When I was dancing, I very much got numbers in my head all the time. There was always some weight goal that I was trying to meet. There was always a number on the scale that I thought would be a better weight for me to be, and it was always lower than what I was at. And that's common. I, I work with a lot of dancers in, uh, you know, as a health coach, and I do see a lot of weight loss goals coming up pretty consistently. That tends to be our number one goal is I think I need to weigh less. So I understand where this concern comes from and I've very much been there. But what I'm going to say, I hope will help some of you to sort of feel a little bit more calm about weight. An appropriate weight for your height is going to really vary from one person to the next. There are a lot of factors that contribute to what the actual number on the scale is. And there are a lot of factors that actually contribute to how that number looks on your personal body. So there are, might be two dancers who are the exact same height, who are the exact same weight, who look completely different. And there could be two dancers who are the exact same height and totally different weights, you know, a variance of 10 or 15 pounds even, who look somewhat similar in body type and shape. So because of that, and because there are no hard or fast rules in how weight is gonna look on someone's body, it's very valuable for you to think about how you feel in dance instead of what the number on the scale is. I did wanna talk a little bit about, about body mass index because I think that that comes up and I think that sometimes dancers think, oh, well, if I'm just a low weight or an underweight BMI, that's a good thing. But the body mass index was actually created in the 1830s. So it's nearly 200 years old. And there's a lot of more recent research and thoughts and studies that show that maybe the body mass index is not something that we should be using to measure healthy weight. The creator of the body mass index himself actually said that it shouldn't be used to measure the quote unquote fatness of an individual, but rather that it should be used for, you know, like government assessments of large scale, you know, population sort of studies and looking at the weights of large groups of people versus the individual. So why or when we started using it on individuals so so commonly is sort of not not clear and it's a little bit of a questionable practice. The body mass index also doesn't take into account the uh, bone mass of a certain individual, the body fat level, and the actual muscle mass of a certain individual, which is going to have a big impact on, again, how your body looks. And it's also going to have an impact on what the actual number on the scale is. Uh, it is true that muscle weighs more than fat. So someone who's got very dense and uh, defined muscles could be thin looking or, you know, could look great as a dancer, but they might have a higher weight than you might expect just based on that and the strength and density of their bones and things like that. So, you know, there are too many things that can go into what the actual number on the scale is for us to put a ton of value in that number. I always say that instead of focusing on weight, try to put the focus on creating a positive mindset around food and your body changing and working on the way you are thinking about your body can have such a big impact on not just your own personal confidence, but how you perform. And then therefore how you show up in auditions, your opportunities that come your way, the way that you're received by different artistic people, artistic staff, people assessing you in auditions, 
And that can have a lot of value. And I think that we don't give it enough value because dance is such a visual art. So it's very easy to just look in the mirror and think, this doesn't look right. The number on the scale must be wrong. Instead of thinking that, sometimes it can help to think, okay, I don't think this looks great. That's valid. That's fair. You don't have to ignore that completely. But ask yourself why you don't think it looks great. Do I want my thighs to be more toned? Do I want them to be smaller? What are potential solutions to this? And how can I support myself in a positive way as I work towards these goals? It's essential to make sure that you're actually eating enough food and that you're focusing on food quality. Sometimes when I'm working with a dancer, they tell me what they're eating in a day and it ends up being significantly less than what they probably actually need. And now what happens most commonly in those situations is then they're having issues where later on that day or on the weekend, they have a hard time sort of controlling themselves with food or they're going into binge eating behaviors and things like that. So if you're getting enough food and you're looking at food quality, so that's, you know, high nutrient dense foods, that's good quality, organic when you can afford it and things like that, when you focus on those things, it's a lot easier to reach your body goals without creating stress around it. My final and probably biggest tip when you're trying to reach a body goal or when you feel like your weight or the number on the scale needs to change is to seek out some support from somebody who can help you. Uh, you know, for dancers, I think some of the most valuable people to work with would be a health coach, a nutritionist, or a dietitian. Any of those people, whoever you find, that person should also have a background in dance. Ideally, they've danced professionally, so they really do understand the pressures of that and what you're in face, what you're facing day to day. But they have to at least have, you know, probably trained at a professional school or something that gives them the perspective to know what your situation is and what you're facing. Because otherwise, you know, I have worked with many dancers who previously worked with someone who said, oh, you're, you should be fine. You're at a healthy weight. But they didn't quite understand what the dancer was experiencing from a feedback perspective or just from a job prospect situation. It's okay to want your body to be different, but you want it to be coming from a place of a positivity and performance and feeling your best, not just the whole aesthetic thing. Uh, if you are looking for support in that, I work with dancers as a health coach and what you would get from a health coach as a dancer would be someone who would sort of coach you through some of the emotional stuff, some of that mindset stuff that comes up around your actual body, flipping that to positives, and then also making food and lifestyle adjustments that are going to help with those areas. Do you remember though, ultimately food is about experimentation and finding what's going to work for your body. So it's very hard to prescribe a specific eating plan for someone that's going to create this specific result. So dancers, all of that goes together to say that there is no specific weight that a dancer should be. And you know, I do hope, and I have seen more diversity in dance bodies, but I've also written and made videos about the pressures that I know you all still face because I hear it from my clients consistently. So the best you can do is to be the healthiest version of yourself and to seek the support that you need to get there. If you can't afford to work with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, seek out healthy online resources like what I do at the Whole Dancer blog or on the Whole Dancer YouTube channel and make sure that you're educating yourself as much as possible. Thank you again so much for tuning in. It is my pleasure as always to chat with you. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any additional questions or topics you'd like me to cover, never hesitate to reach out. You can shoot me an email just at thewholedancer.com and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you next time.